Oh, hi. And welcome back to the Jocelyn's Cabaret Texas After Show, only on Damien After Dark, okay? I'm thrilled that you decided to join me for this after show. So, if you like Zeus Network, Trashy Reality TV, Bad Girls Club, Real Housewives, all that good stuff, you've come to the right place, okay? Before we begin, please click my name below this video and subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. Click that thumbs up button and like this video if you don't do anything else. Click that thumbs up button, okay? Thank you so much. Um, get in the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on episode 11, 12, 11 or 12, somewhere around there. It'll be in the title of the video, whatever this episode is. Okay. Get in the comment section and let me know what you think. Um, got hair in my mouth or something. Ew. Um, last but not least, if you would like to support our channel here to help us grow and sustain, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate, okay? I appreciate that. You're not entitled to donate. It's just a gesture if you want to. Thank you guys so much for the love, the support, sharing my videos, liking my videos, commenting. I appreciate that, and I see you, okay? And I love you guys so, so much. Now, before we begin... Happy Thanksgiving to all my American subscribers, um... Well, let me just say happy Thanksgiving to any of you that celebrate Thanksgiving, okay? I don't want to say all my American subscribers when other people might celebrate too, but I'm pretty sure Thanksgiving is just an American holiday, right? Yeah, it's just an American holiday. Um, But yeah, so I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrated. I hope, and listen, you don't have to celebrate Thanksgiving or it be a part of your traditions to be thankful for something, right? No matter where you are, if you're in the UK, if you're in Asia, if you're in Australia, if you're in South America, no matter where you are, you can be thankful for something today, okay? I'm thankful for you guys. Like, honestly, if you want to keep it real, and this sounds so cliche, but that's why I'm always saying thank you guys. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I'm so grateful for you guys. Honestly, I am so thankful. For this to be Thanksgiving, the number one thing I can say I'm really thankful for, aside from my family and aside from my health and my peace, because peace is so expensive nowadays, I'm so thankful for my YouTube subscribers, because without you guys, I would just be up on, be up here on a mic talking to myself. I can't do it without y'all, without your support, without y'all sharing my videos, without you commenting, without you hitting that thumbs up, but I couldn't do this. I wouldn't get a check each month without you guys supporting me i would not get the gratitude and the um not the, not the gratitude not only gratitude but not i wouldn't get the euphoric feeling that i do from doing these videos if you guys didn't show up and support me and get in the comment section so thank you okay thank you um hope you had great food hope you enjoyed yourselves um if you're off work you know, sit back and just chill. I know everybody ain't off work. I know some people had to go to work the next day. I know some people had to work on Thanksgiving. But if you have some time off, just enjoy yourself. Maybe you can watch this video and have some, have, and you can take this video and just enjoy it and have some you time, some me time, and just throw your feet back, throw your feet up, <laughs> throw your feet back. <laughs> ha Not in that way. Yeah, throw your feet back. Throw your feet back and throw your feet up. Okay? Well, let's get into this video. You know what, in honor of my purple vape, I think I should wear these earrings. They're just sitting here on my desk. This is not planned at all, okay? I just saw the purple, and I'm like, okay, that'll match my vape. <laughs> Y'all know I'll be matching my vapes and shit. Let's get in this episode, Johnson's Cabaret. Now, last week's episode ended with the girls... Some girls were going to be eliminated based off whether or not they got a text message or not, okay? So the girls had a performance, and Jocelyn judged their performance. She talked to Ricardo. You know, she figured out who she wants to keep in the cabaret and who she wants to send home, right? So we know that she sent home Isis. We know that she sent home... Um, Desi, we know that she sent home, um, I said Isis, Isis, Desi, Lex, 
she sent home a lot of the new girls that I really cared for and really liked. Now, we know that Isis is pissed. Isis is not happy that she's getting sent home. She feels like that she deserves a spot in the cabaret over Danny and Andrea. And at this point, she feels like Danny and Andrea may be behind why she was not chosen to move forward. Right? And listen, at first I was looking at this like, okay... Isis, you're kind of being a sore loser. And then I was looking at it like, okay, did production put Isis up to it? Like, Isis, you should go out with a bang. Go run up on them, girl. You know, and then I looked at it like, well, Isis may have a point here when she thought, whether it's true or not, she has a point to where she could think did Danny and Andrea have something to do with me going home because let's look at the let's look at the history of this season Danny and Andrea have been notorious for going back and telling Jocelyn things planting things and telling her little things trying to get girls out of the house so much so to where last week Jocelyn had to tell Andrea stop fucking running up to me and snitching on all these girls right we, we remember that from last week right So Isis runs up in the Sprinter, or at least she tries to. Security stops her before she can get in the Sprinter. I wish they would have let her up in there. Shit. Um, Danny tells Erica, did y'all notice, like, Danny is inside of the Sprinter van. She's screaming at Isis while Isis is outside the Sprinter van. You know, they're arguing back and forth. And at one point, Danny tells erica and ocean she looks at him and she says i should slap you and i should slap you for not doing nothing when she did that and i was just like wait a minute and did y'all notice erica and um ocean didn't say nothing they just sit there and kind of took it i'm like that's not the erica i know how y'all gonna let danny of all people punk you and tell you i should slap you for not doing nothing for sitting there or whatever the fuck she said listen danny is ballsy okay um now, did y'all notice the fine-ass security guard I be telling y'all about? I talked about him on the Baddies Midwest auditions, and now he's here at the cabaret. Baby, we got a good view of him tonight. Him and them muscles, him and them tattoos, him and that face car. I think he's kind of cute. Mm-hmm. Now, Miss Ray, I have some words for Miss Raven, aka Dexter's Laboratory, because Raven had became one of my faves this season, even though I did not like her in the previous seasons. Um, but we're gonna get in her ass in a minute. However, I'm gonna give her her flowers because to me, Raven in this episode, in her confessional, she's never looked more beautiful than she has in her. I thought Raven looked so pretty in that confessional, like, and it wasn't like she was super dolled up. I mean, it was a simple, pretty top. I just thought girl looked good. Homegirl looked good, okay? Whoever did that, whoever styled her, whoever did her makeup and hair, she looked really good. Now, while they're on their Sprinter van, the the girls that were chosen to move on in the cabaret and go and perform in the rest of the Texas cities, they all get on the Sprinter van because they have to go to Dallas. They're in Houston right now. Four girls got eliminated. They're leaving um, Houston and going home. The rest of the girls are getting on the Sprinter van, and they're heading to Dallas for their next performance. Now, while they're on the Sprinter van, headed to Dallas for their next performance, Erica tells Hennessy and Rosé that she feels like that they should have went home. You know, Erica's kind of upset that a lot of her friends went home, like Lex and Isis and those other girls. You know, she's upset that they went home, and she feels like that Hennessy and Rosé should have went home over the other girls because she feels like they didn't work as hard to get there, right? We hear Rosé say, well, what did you want me to do, turn it down? Rosé made a great point when she told them because it's like, you know, Zeus comes to me and says, hey, y'all want to be on this show. Am I supposed to say well, you know, we didn't work as hard as the new girls, so I don't want to be on the show. No, they're going to say yes, right? And we heard Rose tell them that. Um, and Erica says, well, why didn't y'all audition? You say that you want to be here, but why didn't you audition for the show? Y'all were shaking ass in the club, and you were chosen. But I'm like, don't be mad at them. Be mad at Zeus. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. We can't be mad at Rose and Hennessy for saying that. Now, on the flip side, I do get what Erica is saying, like, as far as... People are going home that auditioned, that really wanted to be here, that put in more effort. 
than Hennessy and Rosé. But y'all got to take that up with Jocelyn. That's not a Hennessy and Rosé problem. That's a Jocelyn problem. These girls are just hungry like y'all trying to get out the script club, okay? Um. Now, Rosé talks about, you know, how she's been staying to herself. She mentions that her and Hennessy have been distant. And we kind of hear her and Hennessy and Rosé bicker and argue a little bit on the Sprinter van. And we're really starting to see for the first time within the last few weeks cracks in the foundation of their friendship. Rosé and Hennessy came into this house. They were chosen together when they were working in the strip club together. I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't ever think Rosé and Hennessy were like best friends outside of the strip club. I think what happened is you know how when you work with a co-worker that you might get close to and like y'all are super close at work and your friends at work but y'all don't really hang out outside of work. Y'all know what I'm saying? Does anybody know what I'm saying? Like, I've had friends like that. Like, I've had co-workers that I really like, that I consider, like, a friend inside of work. But we never hang out outside of work. We've never, you know. And I feel like that was Hennessy and Rosé. I feel like they were two young girls that bonded in the strip club and, you know, became close. And then they were chosen by Zeus Network while working in the strip club at Area 29. And they were like, hey, do y'all want to be on this show? We need two more girls. And they went on the show together as these co-worker friends, you know? Because I really feel like if they were true, true friends, like, you know, friends since the fifth grade or friends outside of the strip club, I don't think this show would have been able to have broken them apart. I think these girls have been able to plant bugs in their ears. I feel like producers and everything that goes on with making a reality show has been able to infiltrate these girls' friendship and somewhat break it apart. Because we see in this episode, Rosé and Hennessy just really aren't feeling each other anymore, right? And here's another thing. It's hard to have a friend when you're in a competition, you know, we're comp- they're, they're competing to, to be in the part of this cabaret, and they're competing to be to get the $50,000 prize, right? If there is a $50,000 prize, okay? They're, they're competing to get the alleged $50,000 prize. I need y'all to hold me accountable because I'm not drinking water. Like, I'm on this kick where I'm trying to drink more water, but, baby, I just needed a soda today. And I just need y'all to start holding me accountable in these comments. When you see me with a soda, be like, eh, eh, eh. Where the water at, Damien? Where the water at? Baby, you don't get good skin like this by drinking motherfucking soda pop. Or as we call it in the South, cold drinks. Okay? Um... Now, I did like how on the bus, some of Ocean's friends, like Envy and Erica... Call Ocean out about how she treated Lexi the night before when when um, they were at the dinner. Y'all remember last week's episode? Ocean really showed her ass and called Lexi out when Jocelyn asked Ocean who she thought didn't deserve to be here. Now, Ocean and Lexi are supposed to be somewhat cool friends, have some loyalty to one another because they came into this competition as the new girls and they kind of formed a bond, right? So, Envy brings up, she says, you know, Ocean, I don't think what you did the night before was cool. And here's what I don't like about Ocean. She's flip-flops so fucking much, and she's so, such an ass-kiss that it's all so fake to me. And she even admitted tonight that she was a fucking fraud and that she was fake. Because one minute, she's like, you know, I'm only loyal to the Puerto Rican princess, and I'm going to always choose myself over you girls or what what you know whatever right as you should but on the flip side ocean you we see in this episode when they confront her on what she did to Lexi ocean says she says I'm not going to lie y'all I feel I feel fugazi I feel like I'm fugazi and it's like, uh, because you are, sis, you are fugazi, you are fake, you are fraudulent. My thing is, I would have respected you so much more, swamp water. I would have, ex- I would have respected you so much more, mud puddle, if, if 
your ass would have stood in the what the fuck you did and said, you know what, girls, I'm sorry. I liked I liked Lexi on a personal note. I grew close to her, but Jocelyn asked me who I thought should be here and who I shouldn't, and I don't think Lexi should be here. I think she's here to be a singer, and I'm here to be in this fucking cabaret. But instead, instead, you put pussy popped and backpedaled. And tried to save face in front of your little your little cabaret friends. And you said, you know what, y'all? I felt so fake when I said that. I felt so fake when I said that. But, but you know, I just felt like she shouldn't be. Bye. Bye. You're no longer ocean. You're no longer swamp water. You're no longer mud puddle. You right now, my love, are puddle of piss. Okay? That's just how fucking useless. You're toilet water. Okay? We're going to call you toilet water. Because you are far... From a motherfucking ocean, my love. And I'm glad some of these new girls are holding her accountable. You know what I mean? I'm glad they didn't let Ocean skate by like that because what she did to Lexi was wrong. Just threw Lexi straight under the bus. I liked Lexi. I thought she was a cool girl. She seemed down to earth. Um, now, Raven, this is, you know, Raven's been moving weird this episode. We're going to see Raven do some weird shady shit this episode and next week's episode. Because while they're on the bus, she decides to bring up Hennessy's hygiene yet again. And she's like, you know, uh, something about some of the girls have said that you smell... And, you know, I just feel like we all should keep our hygiene up to par and la la la. Like, it's just like, y'all, it's it's giving Mean Girls 2.0. What did this girl do to y'all? What did Hennessy do to y'all for y'all to think that your shit don't stink, that your twat don't smell? Listen, I get it. We need good hygiene. Everybody needs good hygiene, especially if you're in the cabaret and you're in G-strings and dental floss and you're running around and popping your pussy and twerking and shaking ass. You want to look your best and smell your best, right? But like I said before, if Hennessy really smelled, y'all don't think Jocelyn Hernandez wouldn't have called that hoe out by now in front of God and everybody and sent her packing? I feel like these girls are trying to get a moment off Hennessy, trying to get jokes and laughs and shits and giggles off Hennessy, trying to impress producers by bullying Hennessy. They think that this is fucking cute. They think that you and I, as the audience, are going to watch this shit. <laughs> and we're not. It reminds me of high school bullshit. And what I don't like, what I, it would be different if Hennessy was a bully, if Hennessy was loud, obnoxious, provoked people, got in their face, was always on some bullshit. But what I see from Hennessy is that she's minding her fucking business all the time. What I see from Hennessy is that she stands in the corner, she don't fucking say shit, she's trying to do what she got to do. And I actually admire her for being as strong as she's been and not really going postal on these motherfucking hoes for bullying and pushing her it's just wrong and it's fucked up for y'all to constantly keep saying this girl's pussy stinks this girl's pussy stinks this girl's i smelled her i smelled her pussy too i smelled it like what like it's just not cute like whether her pussy stinks or not it's not funny it's not cute I don't like it. And I don't like that it's coming from you, Raven, of all people. When I said that, like, I said Raven should be the house mom. But now I take that back because you have to be unbiased, Raven, in a way. Like, if they really cared about Hennessy and her hygiene and her smelling, they would pull this girl aside off camera and be like, look, sis, I don't want to embarrass you in front of everybody in the cabaret. I don't want this to be a fucking storyline. But I'm going to tell you right now so nobody else brings it up. But I'm... But listen, at practice the other day, I got a whiff of something, if you know what I mean. And look, baby girl, if you need some deodorant, body spray, tampons, anything, holler at me. Okay, that's the kind of person I am. I'm not going to dog you out and try to bring it up in front of everybody because that's what they're doing. Raven and any of the other girls that have done it, they haven't said it out of concern. They haven't said it because they genuinely care. They haven't said it because they can't stand the smell or that they've even smelled anything. They said it because they're bullies. They said it because they think it's cute. They said it because it makes them feel better about themselves and it takes the drama and attention off of them. And they said it because 
because they're insecure with their own fucking selves and they think that you and I at home are going to hee hee ha 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 and love it and eat it up and say, oh my God, I stand Raven, Team Raven, she's so funny, read, bitch, but we're not. Dexter's Laboratory. And again, what did this girl do to y'all? Okay. Messy ass Raven. Are they mad? Because I saw a scene when they were all outside of the club in Dallas. You know, when they were all in their trailers and stuff, and the girls were outside their trailers stretching. Baby, I think I saw why they mad at Hennessy. I think I saw. Hennessy got ass. Okay. Whether it's a BBL or not, her ass looked good. It matched the thighs. The ass was assing. And I'm like, maybe this is why the girls are mad. Now, another thing I noticed. Why the fuck are they performing at a Tex-Mex restaurant? Bitch. <laughs> Did y'all notice that? It showed the outside of the venue they were at. And it said Tex-Mex Bar and Grill, bitch. That's like, a you might as well be at a Taco Bell performing. What happened to the strip clubs? Like, y'all went below the strip. Like, I get it. Jocelyn's Cabaret is not going to be at Nissan Stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the State Farm Arena, the Orion Amphitheater, the Coca-Cola Roxy. You know, it's not going to be at any of those venues, right? I get that. Strip clubs made sense. You know, it fit the brand. It fit the audience. But now y'all have lowered it to... A Tex-Mex bar? How many people does that even see? A hundred? Now, I was watching this. Listen, y'all gonna get mad at me when I say this, but I didn't say it. My mom said it, okay? My mom was watching this show with me, which she hates watching this type of shit, but I was like, I told her, I'm like, look, I'm doing my homework. I gotta do this for YouTube. She was like, okay, I'll watch it with you. So we're watching... Keep in mind, she don't know none of these girls. She don't know none of these girls. But baby, we she was watching the scene with me while they were outside the trailer stretching. And she saw Danny. Danny in this big burnt orange wig. And she was like, Who is she was like, Who is that? She was like, Who is and this is why I say transphobia affects biological women too okay not saying that my mom's transphobic because she's not at all but my mom literally thought there was a trans girl on now also no shade because there's a lot of trans girls that aren't clockable at all okay there's a lot of trans girls that you would never be able to tell was trans there's a lot of people that you've passed in your life before that were trans and you never knew it but my mother thought the same thing I've said before about Danny. My mom thought Danny looked trans. And listen, that could be a compliment in some cases. Most biological women will tell you that being being told that they look trans is not a compliment, right? Even though that a lot of some biological women are going for the trans aesthetic. Whether you want to believe it or not, some are. There are some that go to get these surgeries to look certain. You know, and, the, and yet the trans aesthetic, that's a whole other video. We could talk about that, whether y'all agree with me or not. But my mom was like, is there a trans girl on the cast? I'm like, who? And I already knew who she was talking about when she said it. Because baby out there, when they were stretching... Like, don't get me wrong. There are beautiful masculine women. There there are women who do the weightlifting, that have the muscles. But I'm thinking of men who go to the strip club for sex appeal and, you know, the 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 feminine bitches with the ass and the tit. Danny, don't give me that. Y'all might get mad. I don't care. I'm going to say it. Danny, don't give me that. Baby, Danny's muscles and shit. Danny looked like a bodybuilder in a G-string in a fucking burnt orange wig, okay? It's not sexy to me. I don't get... It would be different if Danny had a pretty face and a pretty personality and then she had the muscles. Okay, whatever. But, babe, it's all giving me brick. It's all giving me... Ruh. It's all giving me testosterone. And it don't help, Danny, when you when you act very masculine. Again, don't get my words twisted. I'm a feminine man. There's nothing wrong with masculine women. There's nothing wrong with women with muscles. There's nothing wrong with a brick woman. But I just don't think it's necessarily... When I think about Jocelyn and who she's choosing for the cabaret, I'm like, I'm like ISIS. What you want, what you want these two for? 
Danny and Andrea. I don't get sex appeal. Andrea Andrea could have sex appeal, but her attitude ruins it. Her personality ruins it. The way she talks all the time, like, and thinks she's all this and that, and this voodoo princess. No. No. No, 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 no. Okay? That's my rant on Danny. Now, the girls do their performance in Dallas. As the, you know, they're doing the cabaret performance in Dallas. And this is without the girls that have been eliminated, right? So, we've eliminated four girls. Now we're down to, what, ten? They all perform in Dallas. They leave Dallas, and then they head to San Antonio. Because this season was supposed to be the girls doing a little tour in Texas. So, they're going to Dallas, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio. They're in San Antonio, they get there, and they go immediately to rehearsals. Now, while they're at rehearsals, and they're stretching, and they're warming up, and they're doing their thing, Raven decides to call out Neek for not responding to the group chats. I guess um, Raven was sending out group chats, and Neek did not respond, and Raven took that like, well, why did you not respond? Raven says, you know... We're supposed to be working together. I want to know what the group chat said, though. Because, Raven, if you were in the group chat trying to be Miss Bossy Bitch until, you know, because if you sent a group chat, hey, ladies, I need y'all to do this, be ready at 4 da, da, I would have ignored it, too. Because until Jocelyn appoints you as the bottom bitch, until Jocelyn appoints you as the house mother, I wouldn't listen to you and neither. Especially the way you've been moving lately. You've been moving real funny these last few episodes, Raven. Because I'd really grown to like you and Diamond a lot. But now you're back on your bully shit. And that ain't cute to me at all. What I really liked about you, Raven, is I felt like you and Diamond were trying to be like the OGs and, you know, give everybody a chance. And you didn't seem, you seemed like you were getting annoyed with the petty drama and stuff. But now you seem like you are stirring the fucking pot and licking the spoon. And not in a good way. Because when you bully bitches, it turns us off. Because I really feel like that the girls think that the fans are going to be on their side and and not like Hennessy when it's actually, I think, the other way around. Now, also, while they're... While Raven and Neek go back and forth and they argue, Envy ends up saying, you know, I wanted to address the room because my chain was stolen. She has a chain that says Envy, and apparently it was stolen. And then Hennessy says, oh, I had your chain. It was after we had our fight and our argument. She says, but I took your chain and I put it on the dresser. I set it on a dresser. And then she says that Rosé ended up coming and getting the chain. And that was the last that she saw of it. So she kind of tried to throw a friend under the bus there in that moment. Anyway, they both girls said that they took the chain. So they both would be suspects in my eyes. Okay, where the fuck is my chain? Y'all both said you had your hands on it, right? And they both said that they took it after they fought Envy. They, you know, so I think it was more like a get back type thing. Never a intentional just let me try to steal your shit. I think it was like, you know, I'm pissed at you. I'm going to fuck with your shit. Bad Girls Club style. Um, but we're, we, again, we're watching the end of Hennessy and Rosé's friendship in front of our eyes you know they've already said that they're getting distant from one another now they're throwing each other under the bus over who has this chain or not who do y'all think has the chain um i don't know i mean kind of i kind of i think i believe rose more because hennessy couldn't make eye contact when she was talking and hennis and rose seemed more adamant and confident about what she did but i don't know um because like i said one of them says they have it the other one says they don't i mean one of them says they don't have it and the other one says they, that they don't have it i don't know but the girls have a lot of animosity towards one another okay now we get to see more of um puddle of pisses True personality, swamp water, a.k.a. Ocean. Jocelyn asks Ocean who she thinks should go home. Now, notice, this is like the second or third time Jocelyn has asked Ocean this. And I think they're asking Ocean this on purpose because they know that they're always going to get some drama. Because last time that they asked her this, she said Lex, and it created some issues. This time she asked Ocean who she thinks should go home. 
and Ocean starts going off about Rose and Hennessy, and she keeps talking and talking, and Jocelyn's like, stop beating around the motherfucking bush and tell me who you think should go home. And Ocean switches it up again, and she says, I think Erica should go home. Now, Ocean and Erica have been friends in the house. They've been allies in this house, right? And Erica is pissed at this point. Obviously so, because it's like, bitch, why the fuck you throwing my name out there when we've been somewhat cool? Why didn't you stick to Hennessy and Rosé? You gonna throw my motherfucking name out there? I understand why Erica was pissed. Erica also thought Ocean was her friend. That's where you fucked up, because there ain't no friends in this game. Again, y'all are in a competition, right? You are in a competition. And Ocean done told y'all she's loyal to one person only, the, the Puerto Rican fucking princess. Now, I don't believe she's loyal to the Puerto Rican princess. I think she's fucking saying that because it's convenient for her and she's doing whatever she can to stay in this house. That whole swamp water ain't loyal to no goddamn body. She ain't even loyal to her own family, okay? Anybody that acts the way Ocean is, you got to watch Anybody that kisses ass the way Ocean does, you got to watch their back. They've got ulterior motives. Okay? Now, Erica nails it. Erica, baby, was going in on old uh, Swamp Water, and I loved it. Erica tells Swamp Water that she says, you have no sex appeal. She's, she said what the people wanted. I, I, I write, she's right there with Danny. When I look at Ocean and Swamp Water, she has zero sex appeal to me. Okay? zero she has no rhythm she can't dance she got her rhythm from her white side she's got two left feet right you like your personality is shit you gotta okay it's not like you're a bombshell in the in the looks department you're you're okay to me ocean gives me white trailer trash i'm just gonna be real with you and like i've told y'all before that is no shade to anybody that lives in a trailer I've lived in trailers before. I will live in a trailer. I'm not against it, bitch. Give me a trailer, a nice little trailer with some cheap rent, bitch. I'm right motherfucking there. I ain't never been too good for it, okay? Period, right? Now, but there's also a difference between trailers and white trailer motherfucking trash. And you give me trailer trash, Ocean. You give me, you got stains in your panties, you give me the type of bitch that lets a man nut in her and don't clean it out after a few days. You the type of hoe that leave a tampon in your coochie. Okay? Let me just be quiet. Now, Ocean, after Erica says you have no sex appeal, Ocean says, that's a lie, baby. I have sex appeal. That's a fucking lie. I have sex appeal. Did y'all see that scene? Where she lifted her leg up. I've got sex appeal, baby. Oh, I got. And Erica even mocked her. Bitch, you look like a dog dry humping a motherfucking fire hydrant, hoe. You thought that was. You thought you looked sexy. You thought that was motherfucking sex appeal, bitch. You give skanky ocean water. It gives skank. I'm sorry. It gives cheap, dirty hooker. It gives skank. Suck a dick for a 20 sack of weed. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the type of trick that's going to fuck for some Newports in the back of a Buick, bitch. Like, I... That's ocean water to me. Swamp water. Piss water. Toilet water. Now, Erica says that Ocean wants this opportunity so bad that she will cross and betray anyone to get it. Now, didn't I say that? I said Ocean will literally sell her family down the river. She don't care what she got to do. And when you got somebody like that around you that's dangerous when you got somebody that will do anything anything that i don't want them kind of people around me okay i just i just don't want the kind of people around me and uh, erica y'all gotta stop expecting these hoes to be loyal to you that's on the flip side like i blame ocean but i also blame erica because it's like you should have had your antennas up with her you should you should have been when when jocelyn asked her who she thought would go home you should have been ready for her to say your motherfucking name now, Swampwater says Erica is taking it personally. She's like, you're taking it personal. And it gets to the point to where they, st where Swampwater stands up and Erica's like, why the fuck you standing up? And then it ends up resulting in a fight. The girls end up fighting one another. I was really hoping Erica would, you know, do ocean water the way that she did Jigsaw, Miss K. 
uh, you know, episodes ago, earlier in the season. But really, you know, all we saw was kind of like some hair pulling, some holding on to one another. Um, I'm just, based off of next week's episode, we do see Erica land a few hits into Swamp Water's head. Um, I just hope Erica humbles this girl. Let me say that, okay? I hope I hope you get humbled, Swamp Water. Um, now, next week, we're going to see this fight continue. And we're going to hopefully see Erica whoop Swamp Water's ass. I'd like to see her with another cherry on her eye. After Hennessy, you'd think after Hennessy done clocked you in the head and kicked your ass in the head like a football that you would humble yourself a bit, but that didn't help. Now, not only are we going to see that continuation of that fight next week, Raven is still on this bully bullshit. We see next week, Jocelyn is, has to send someone else home. There's nine girls left. She says she can only have eight in the cabaret, so they have to send one more person home. And what does Raven do? Raven is grasping for straws, and she's trying to throw anybody that she can under the bus to stay. So she is on her bully shit. We see her with Rosé. Telling Rosé that, one, you don't deserve the money. She says, Raven, next week, Raven says, I feel like Rosé does not deserve to be here because she's 21. She's too young. You know, the rest of us need it for this. I'm like, what? Now, now listen. Y'all know I'm 31, and I'm, there's lots of times I'm up here talking about how, you know, a lot of these young these 21, 22, 23 year olds on these shows be acting a fucking fool doing the craziest dumb shit as you do in your in your early 20s. But Rosé has shown me that she is a very mature young lady to be 21. Rosé has acts more mature than a lot of y'all that are 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 older than her. Um, and to pull the excuse out of your ass, Raven, that Rosé doesn't deserve the money because she's 21. That's the biggest crock of shit that I've ever seen heard in my life. And even Rosé said, I don't deserve the money because I'm 21? What about all these mothers out here, these single mothers that are 21? What about all these 21-year-old girls that are out here going to college and busting their ass, who have uh, two jobs, a child going to college? What about all these young 21-year-olds out here who have their heads on their shoulders and they're trying to make a... They don't deserve $50,000 because they're young? What fucking sense does that make, Raven? I'm starting to think that you've got fucking rocks for a brain. Okay, what a dumb fucking statement to make. I would have sent you home right then if I was Jocelyn. I would have said, Raven, you sound ignorant and you're grasping for straws trying to throw anybody under the bus to save your ass. I'm sending you home. That's what I would have done. Raven's doing a lot. And then on top of that, she decides to tell Rose and your breath stinks. Like, here we go. Pussy stinks. Your breath stinks. I'm starting to think you hoes are projecting. I'm starting to think you hoes are projecting because Rosé has been here eight, nine episodes and we just now talking about her breath stinking. Why ain't y'all done said that? Y'all done said Hennessy's pussy stank 50 times. Where it, The breath is just now coming up. I can't stand when hoes do this shit. I be feeling like they lying. You know, sometimes people when they're in a fight or they're mad, they just throw shit out there to try to make you look bad. And listen, Raven could be, they could all be telling the truth. Hennessy's pussy could be stinking and Rosé's breath could be stinking. But I mean... Both of these girls are strippers. Surely they're not in a strip club every night with stanky pussies and stank breath. Child, I don't know, but I want to know what y'all think. <laughs> okay, let me know what y'all think. Do y'all think the girls were bullying Hennessy this week? And do you think Raven it was bullying Rosé on the sneak peek for next week? And what did you guys think about that fight between Erica and Ocean at the end? Do y'all think... Ocean is just doing the most like I do? Or do you actually like Ocean? I want to hear all your guys' thoughts and opinions. Make sure you get in the comment section and let me know. Let your voice be heard. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe by clicking my name down there. When you click my name, it'll take you to my page and just click subscribe. Also, if you don't do anything else, okay, if you don't do anything else before you leave, click that thumbs up button and like this video, okay? When you like this video, YouTube promotes the hell out of us. When you like the video, YouTube says, oh, people like this. Let's share it out to more people, okay? Last but not least, if you would like to join the Damien After Dark movement and help us grow and sustain this channel into something bigger than you've ever seen, in the description box below will be some ways that you can donate. Okay, 
PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle, it's all down there. No amount is too little, okay? Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, all that, okay? I hope you had a great Thanksgiving with you and your family. I hope you ate lots of great food. And I hope that you found something to be thankful for. And you know what? If you want, put that in the comments too. Let me know what you are thankful for this year, okay? I'd love to read all that you guys have to say. I want to hear what you're thankful for, okay? Happy holidays. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Um, I will see you guys in December for the Baddies Midwest after show and the next Jocelyn's Cabaret after show. And yeah, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Thanksgiving. And I'll see you guys soon. Love you so much. Peace.